People always say, oh, you got red hot leads. You need red hot leads. Oh, fucking brilliant. How do I get more people in? How do I get new leads in? Coaches don't like to hear this because it requires patience. It requires some sort of effort from you for no immediate return. Leads are actually everywhere. You will never know when the right time is for that person to sign up. In this video, we are going to show you how leads are actually everywhere. Hey guys, uh, welcome to this podcast, Business and Banter. It's with me, Mike. That's too. That's me and him. You've started differently. I do it differently. I, the first one's always a bit different, and then I get into the flow and go, right. So we are done a mic. We're here to help you with your fitness business in any way we can. There we go. Yeah, that's that's what we're here for. There's the Formerly Bicep and Banter uh, on our YouTube channel. We're now Business and Banter. So yeah, ju just that first one always always goes a little bit differently. But anyway, today, I was, do you know what I was going to do? So I was going to make a joke about Leeds as in like the place. And I was like, oh, there's not nothing quite there. funny about Leeds. It's not quite there. Well, there is lots of funny about Leeds. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when you go there, see what's, grim. what's, see what's there. You went um, to uni there, though. So. To go to uni there. That's when it started going down. I when I Only left. one when I left that you could get into, I had. Going, so. Wow. Red Brick University, isn't it? That one? Three, three O levels. I think it's top yeah. 10. He's going to be a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Today, we're going to talk to you about how leads are actually everywhere around you because a lot of coaches just focus on getting new people through the door they want new followers new leads all the time and we're going to talk about actually how they're probably right in front of you you're just looking in all the wrong places yeah i just think um this is this is kind of like being born out of um maybe a couple of clients who have potentially panicked a little bit lately um with a couple of drop-offs so um, firstly, having a couple of drop-offs within your coaching business is inevitable. It's always going to happen. Um, it will always happen um, moving forwards. Um, it never feels nice, um, but you do have to accept it to, uh, to to some degree, unless you're getting inordinate amounts of drop-offs that there's something actually wrong with your coaching, your service, or your onboarding, or something like that. If you're getting a normal amount of drop-offs, maybe um, up to 10% of your of your coaching numbers each month. So if you're at 30 clients, for example, then three would probably be a regular amount to, to be dropping. If you're losing 10, that's when you've got an issue. But um, it, it's kind of born from a couple of clients, um, at three of my clients actually, all in the similar similar boat. There are a couple of drop-offs and straight away there's like a panic of how to get, how do I get more people in? How do I get new leads in? Mm. Each of these three people actually, um, and this doesn't apply to everybody, but each of these three people had a, or has a group coaching running. Um, and all three of these people, well, I say three of these people, two of the people had already booked their success calls. One had booked um, 26 calls off the back of his group coaching and the other one 23 off the back of her group coaching. The third one um, hadn't put them out yet. And there was still like this, this big emphasis on how to how how they're getting leads from Instagram, but I was like, mm. but you've got all of these leads here that have already paid you some some money. I was like, so those are the people that you should actually be looking at trying to engage, as opposed to how do I take somebody from absolute scratch on Instagram from new follower to client? Well, what about these people who have probably been followers for a little while? They've paid you some money. They're actually within your coaching. They're seeing results. Um, and we just kind of had to steady the ship that way. And it was just one of the realizations that people just look to new um, followers as as leads. So I, I guess in this video, it's not just going to be about how to find, find them from a group coaching program, because we know that that's not applicable to everybody, but how to find them with, you know, within the current things that you're, that you're doing. There's just a hierarchy of just where to look for these things. And I think that like Mike just said then, let's assume that you don't have a group coaching program because that would be the first place to, to focus on is that you've got to remember that people have to go through this pro, a buying process, like a trust process to kind of want to buy from you. And you've probably had it before if you're a half decent coach of someone going, oh, I've followed you for ages and it's just uh, now's the right time I'm going to reach out. Is that often we don't know when someone's ready to buy or when someone's ready to purchase or when someone's ready to become a, a client or a customer of ours. But we can look at what they're doing in their behavior on social media or, or via email or that kind of thing and figure out whether we think they're close to, to being a client or not. So for example, the amount of people who say to me like, oh, I just, I just could do with some leads. Uh, I don't know where to, you know, I need some followers on Instagram. I need to, who should I DM on Instagram? I'm like, well, go to your email list first because your email list are people that are further along that buying journey because they put their hand up to say, I want your free guide. I want what you're offering, which is, should be niche specific. It should be easy to download. It should be there in your bio. They've taken that leap to go, I trust this person enough to see what they can give away for free and to see what they're going to, they're going to be able to teach me. So straight away in terms of a buying process, You've got to assume that those people on the email list are going to be further along that journey than those that aren't. 
That's number that's number one. So if you've been emailing your list regularly, they're the first that's the first port of call to go into. You can go into your email list, you can make sure you're following those people who are on the email list, make sure that you're interacting on Instagram. They're little things that you can do along the way. So that's first that's the first port of call is, is the email list. Um for, for like kind of like new leads. Even I say even before that, you probably got old clients or any inquiries. Anyone who's ever inquired you and not followed through. Oh, they might have followed. Uh, not like that. Not like that. There again, they they had they had the balls initially to reach out and inquire. So they're again further along the buying journey than someone who hasn't ever reached out to you. Again, they may not have gone through with it. They may not have gone through that. They may have ghosted the call. They may have like after the call said, "Oh, it's not, I can't afford it yet." They are still more likely further down the line than someone who's completely brand new into your business. Yeah, I think there's just a reluctance from from coaches um, to kind of almost do that do that work to put that that little bit of effort in. I think what coaches, again, respectfully tend to do is they just post and expect magic to happen with people that sign up. They think there's a magic... I'm looking for five people. Yeah, there's a magic way of posting that gets new people in who you've had no interaction with. Whereas, like Dan said there, you almost should be... If you do need clients, which which is a phrase that I hate because everybody could probably do with some clients, and it should never be reactionary. But let's just say you are going to push a little bit it would be probably ex clients. Hey mate, how's things? Um, yeah, I know that you mentioned that you might want to come back in the future, as most people do. Um, I've currently got a couple of spaces open. Um, just thought I'd reach out and see if you were fancying getting set up again. Yeah, one. Okay. Next, it could be that some people that you work with um, might be able to get you a referral. So, hey, um, hope you're good. Just looking for new members to to join the team. Um, and who better than to ask the current guys that I work with to see if they know somebody who's looking for a similar sort of thing to themselves. If you do know anybody, I'd love it if you could make the introduction and I'll drop you £50 for the referral and they will also get £50 off the first month as a, as a referral fee, as an incentive. Again, those two are very, very simple, easy things that you can do. Next, like Dan said, it would be the email list. The amount of coaches that either A, don't have an email list or B, have one that they don't email to me, you probably don't have a right to then think that you can magically lead out of thin air because if you don't have an email list or you're not regularly emailing, by definition, you are expecting to post on Instagram and sign people up. That's not going to happen. Or it's not a consistent, foolproof approach of, of, of creating leads. So it would be the email list. It would be okay, like Dan just said there. These 50, 100, 200, 500 people have put their metaphorical hands up and gone, I like what you're saying enough to go that next step from Instagram and not like a post, but actually give you my name, my email address and start to open some of your emails and receive something free from you because I've selected you as a coach. These people are the most bought in, but coaches just don't recognize that. They go, oh, email is a bit pointless, isn't it? What, yeah, because they don't get those likes back straight yeah, away. Yeah, more or less pointless than posting and not knowing who it's reaching. Like, yeah. how, how, can it be, how can it be more pointless than that? Yet, coaches are more willing to do that, to, to, to post on Instagram and not know who's reaching it or not know who's interacting with it or engaging with it and not know. How can it be, how, how, how can it be more pointless than that? These people are literally there going, yeah, I like what, you, what you're saying. And you know specifically what they need help with. They got a fat loss guide. They got muscle gain in seminar. Mm -hmm. Like, you know specifically what they need help with. So reach out to them, engage with them, follow them. And that's the thing is, it, it just requires work. And that's why coaches don't like it because the, putting out a piece of content is easier. Putting out into the abyss in the hope that someone's going to reach out is, is easier. And you can blame the algorithm. You can blame Instagram then. It's someone else's fault when actually you haven't done any of the work that's, that's kind of needed. And ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Like Mike said there, there's, there's loads of things you can do with current clients, um, ex-clients, that kind of stuff. And, and I think these are the places that you should be looking. And, and as Mike alluded to, we all need clients, technically. Could all do with, with a few more clients, right? we're full, but whatever. There's, there's also that point you get to where like every single coach you work with could do with another five clients. Who wouldn't want another five clients paying them a higher price? Who wouldn't want that? Of course they would. And it's so, again, like I said, it's, it's sort of a bit pointless you saying that because you should be doing these things we're saying all the time. 
because you should need clients all the time. In theory, you want people to be engaged in your process of like, whether it's you've got group coaching, whether it's one-to-one, but you need to start engaging them with content, a lead magnet, an email list in that order so that they then buy from you. It's very rare someone's going to follow you and within a week go, oh my God, I've got to sign up for coaching with this guy. And if they do, or girl, and if they do, they're probably not the right type of client for you and they'll drop off because they want a result that quickly that if they don't see it in four weeks, they're just going to sack it all off. Because we've all had that before. We go, oh, that's a bit weird. Someone's just reached out. You get on a call. They say, yeah, it all sounds great sign up for a month and then they just disappear because they weren't bought into you. They weren't bought into the process. Because when we talk to coaches about this is it is a longer term process. It is a case of we're trying to woo someone effectively and build a relationship with them over time. And that does take time. That does, that does put, I suppose, there's some effort required. There is some hard work to put in with that because you will never know when the right time is for that person to sign up. So many coaches sit there and go, well, I need five clients. So they better be, they better be ready for it. Well, what if they're not ready? What if there are five people there that are waiting, but they're just not ready? They're going to wait till next month when they get paid their bonus. You don't know. doesn't mean that they don't like your stuff. doesn't mean they're not going to reach out. But if you start looking really, really desperate and you try and force the hand, I think you can put people off just as much as you can attract them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, I, I think those primarily would be the areas that I would be, that I would be looking at. Um, Because they're the ones as well that that have kind of like straight away that have kind of like shown you beyond just like engaging with your content. They're the ones that have shown you that they're interested. Yeah. There's no doubt that they've shown they're interested in that. So that's the first section of it, right? Is you go, right, well, they're the people that I know you should be putting majority of your time into. Yeah. Majority of your time. Because then there's obviously that the next step is going, okay, cool. Based on my Instagram, based on social media, where would I then look next in terms of like interaction and and making conversation? Yeah, I would say... That anybody that you've probably regularly had a conversation with is probably the next step bought in. Um, and again, we kind of get this uh, friction to some degree where it's like, oh, it feels like I'm talking to the same people with your with your DMs. And it's like, yeah, you should be. Like, because, well, the alternative is, is that, so that means that you're expecting to talk to them once then and something happen. Mm. Well, if if we can agree that that's probably unlikely, then you should be talking to them more more often, right? So then what's the problem? So yes, you will be talking to the same people, just like we will be talking to the same 50, 100 coaches on a semi-frequent basis with no pressure, no sales, but just relationship building. Now, I know if I was looking for a sign-up, which actually coincidentally, we've just announced that our prices are going up and we put out one or two posts yesterday and we've had some calls booked in from that. And it is, you know, that those are the people that we've probably spoken to over the last couple of months on a, you know, every three, four days, weekday, you know, 10 days, something like that, that there's been a comment that there's been, you know, a, a reply to a story that there's been a, a, an input from one of the posts that you've put out. It's those people that are probably the next stage brought in. So again, rather than going, is there a magic piece of content that I can then start to create that's going to pull in new sets of eyes onto your page to to then miraculously sign up and and, and pay you some cash. What about these people? Can we pay a bit more attention to reaching out towards their stuff? Can we respond to their stories a little bit more? Can we get back in touch with them about how they, how they got on with the lead magnet? If they got the lead magnet, can we um, engage with them a little bit more in terms of the things that they're responding to you and, and and carry the, the conversation on a little bit more? Can we at some stage be a little bit more direct with them? Like, start to when it feels like the time is right to then move the conversation to art. Oh, so like what are you doing at the moment in the gym? Um or are do you, you know, are you have you got any goals for this summer? Like down the line, and please don't take from this that that's three messages. It it's genuinely more like three months. Three months. So, and maybe maybe more. Yeah. Maybe more than three months. Mm-hmm. Like I'm talking like three, four, five, six months. Those people that you've spoken to enough and not been salesy and it it probably would be more natural to fit into the conversation then rather than somebody's just followed you. Hey mate, thanks for the follow. Can I help you with anything nutritional training? Too salesy, too quick. Mm -hmm. Do it the other way. And then, you know, even, even beyond that, then you've got people who would, I say, regularly like your content. They may be the same people you're speaking to in DMs, but I would always say coaches say to me, oh, should I follow this person back? Or should I follow everyone back who looks like they could be a client? I'm like, no, I was like, wait till someone looks like that they're liking your content. Let's say they like, you know, 10 of your last 20 posts, something like that. Why not follow them back? Why not take an interest in their life, take an interest in them as a human being? And again, I think what coaches are going to think when they look at this sort of video is they're going to go, oh, great, I'm going to get leads now straight away. I'm like, no, this is how you're going to get leads in three to four months. Like I said, five months, six months time is by following someone back 
back and shown an interest in them beyond just a client number, beyond just potentially having a lead, is I actually take an interest in them. It's like Mike said, out of those 50 to 100 coaches that we may be speaking to any one time, I know things about them and their life because I've followed them and I take an active active um, role in looking at their stories and looking at what they're actually posting so that I can talk to them about other things beyond fitness, beyond business, beyond those sorts of stuff, right? And it's not through any other any other angle than just wanting to be social because that's the whole point of social media. So again, looking at those people who like your post regularly, who comment on your post regularly, who DM you regularly, take an interest in their life, follow them back and see what they're doing. And you've got something else that you can talk to, talk to them about, build those relationships over time. So rather than this being like, I said at the start, right, where can we get leads from? Who do we need to contact? It's also looking at it as a monthly thing of going, right, over this last month, who's been engaged in my contact recently that I don't follow? Maybe I should follow them. Maybe I should start taking an interest there. Because then in three months' time, they're the person that might download the email, uh, the email, uh, the lead magnet to your email list. They may join the priority list for your group coaching. They may start, you know, commenting the word coaching if you send out a thing, and they may not take it any further, but they may have commented on it. The point is that throughout this buying process, every time that you do these little things, you're just moving someone further along the buying process, which is why that if you start with those people who are on the email list now and you start with the X clients now, it means that in three months time, if you do those things in three months time, they'll be moved further up that chain almost. So they will be on the email list. So you'll be talking to them more. Coaches don't like to hear this because it requires patience. It requires some sort of effort from you for no immediate return. And that's the problem is that the leads are everywhere. You're just looking in all the wrong places because you're going to those people who have just followed your Instagram and going, hey, do you need help with coaching? It's ridiculous. It is abs- it's moronic when you think about it. Mike uses this analogy all the time. It's like walking into a bar, speaking to five different women, asking each one if they'll marry you. It's like, you're not going to get anywhere. Mm. I wouldn't have thought. It's not how it worked for me anyway. Mm. I had to pay a lot of money. Um, it's not going to work, right? And likewise, if there was 100 women in there, you wouldn't go up to each one and go, hey, fancy going on a date with me? You would pick the five that you think, okay, I'm going to spend a bit more time speaking to them, and it would take you weeks and months to probably get them on a date. That's long years if you're me. It's going to take time and you're going to put more effort, like Mike said before, about, oh, I speak to the same people over and over again. Yeah, you're going to. Uh, you would speak to the same person over and over again if you're trying to date them. Of course you would. That's how you build a relationship. That's what it's done. So I think that's the important thing to remember here is you're just trying to move people along this buying process and that people look at leads as in that they're ready to buy not as in that they could buy in the future. Start viewing it as, well, this person could buy in the future. Maybe I should start moving them along the chain and start talking to them as a human, taking interest in their dog and their life and their sport and go from there and stop seeing it as a lead has to be someone that pays you money at the end. It doesn't have to be. You can just move them from one stage to another. Yeah, it's funny you bring up the dating analogy. So in one of the um, events that we ran, we uh, we did a we did a little bit of a presentation where it kind of likened getting leads to like Tinder. And um, I think some of the points that I made then were um, people are, are more inclined to put effort into their Tinder Mm. and their conversations to try to impress a girl or a guy to get on a date with them. And it's that same level of effort that you would try to woo somebody into a date with need to be applied within Instagram. So the funny... Funny you say that, because the thing about that would be that the, you need a unique opening line, right? Yeah, Different. yeah. You don't just go straight away going, hey, do you want to go out for food? Literally. Like, it is, isn't it? It's that yeah, element yeah. of they put a unique message. They don't just copy and paste it to the same person to every, no. every single person. It's like, you're not going to get somebody, like coaches do the equivalent of getting somebody in bed after the first message. Whereas actually what needs to happen is you need to probably chat to somebody for a few days, f- suss out whether you like one another, then probably decide to maybe meet up, have a date. Chances are is that you might need to go on a second date, third date before you manage to get them into the bed. If that is the end goal or we, we're liking in that to the equivalent of signing them up, it's the same thing, right? It's that for, for not everybody, obviously, but um, some people are slags. <laughs> um, like, yeah. But for some people, let's just say, they're going to need a couple of conversations. They're going to need to meet you a few times before they feel comfortable to, to take things to the next level. It's exactly the same as a follower. You're expecting them to pay their hard-earned cash, show pictures of themselves in their pants, Careful. trust you to... Listen, I just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, send you dick pics. It's exactly the same um, as Tinder, apparently, at the moment. <laughs> yeah. You're expecting, you're expecting people to just buy like that, and you wouldn't do that. So put, apply the same amount of effort that you would do with your dating profile, making sure that the pictures are nice, that they show you in the best light, that your bio's all set up, that there's something a little bit like jokey in there that makes you stand out, that you then... Um, you know, try to create a conversation with them and, and your first message isn't, hey, do you want to sleep with me? It's probably not that, is it? So take those same principles and apply them with looking for leads. 
Yeah, and I think the, the last thing to, to I want you to take from it is to think of, about it as well and don't just think that leads are just this on-off switch. They're either a lead or they're not. There's this journey they've got to go through. Like, again, like you could use temperature and people go cold, lukewarm, warm, hot, whatever, right? People always say, oh, you got red hot leads. You need red hot leads. Oh, fucking brilliant. But it's that whole process of going, it's not just saying they're either a lead or they're not. It's not as binary as that. It's not as straightforward as that because everyone goes through a process and some people will drop off when they're high up the the, the the process. They will. They may not go any further. Again, just like you've probably done the same thing with like Mike said with Tinder stuff, right? Is that some things just don't work out. And, and I think that coaches need to take that view of it more often, that it's just work and it's part of the job and you're trying to take people through that journey rather than seeing it as this binary, I've got no leads coming in. Because to me, that means that you do not understand the process because you will have leads coming in. You just don't understand where they're at. And yeah. in terms of that process, you don't understand the, the journey they're on. It shows me that you just see it as a binary, they're a client or they're not, or they're going to sign up or they're not. And it's not like that. Mm. You have different depths of, of trust and no like and trust within that. And you've got to figure that out and go, okay, cool. If I haven't got any red hot leads, let's call them right at the top, what are you doing at the bottom end then of people that are colder, that are trying to get them a little bit warmer, trying to get them towards a lead magnet? Like, what are you doing there? Because it just tells me that you're focused too much on that one end of that binary spectrum of like, well, I've got a core booked or not. And it's like, well, it doesn't really mean anything. It's why we track things like new followers, CTA to a lead magnet, how many people on your email list you've got, and all those sorts of things. Because those are important numbers to track over time as well, because that will dictate in the future, whether you have people who are ready to then book a call, who are ready to do that sort of thing. So that's the, the, the one thing I want you to take from it is to not just think, like say, it's either that they're a leader or not, because leads are everywhere. You've just got to figure out what stage of that process and that journey they're on and make sure you're plugging the gaps in your own lead journey and you're making sure that you're bringing people in, I hate the word funnel, but you're bringing people into that throughout the start rather than just focusing just on the end. I've just made some notes there on my phone because that will be the next members call. Um, See, that's, that's what I'm here for. If you are interested in the members group, which is our low cost um, <clears throat> community, where you get uh, video library access to all of the videos we've ever done with our members group and our one-to-one -one clients, plus access to the group call that runs every single week um, mm -hmm. to have your input, your questions, etc. There's a link. It's below this video, most likely, I would guess. It's in the description. Somewhere. It is there. It's in the description. Um, yeah. Maybe take a little look, have a little look. Um, if you have any questions, message Dan. I won't reply. Um, but uh, yeah, hope to see you in there. Yeah, I had a good bit of feedback from someone on the call the other day. They said they're in the group. Uh, they were calling me about one-to-one -one coaching, but they were in the group and they said that it's a really nice continuation from these videos. It's loads more in-depth. There's loads more actual useful strategy beyond just us giving you the introduction. We then go deeper into like how to do this, when to do it, what things to focus on. They're obviously a little bit longer in terms of depth, but he sort of said it was a great sort of like next step from the YouTube. So just a little bit of uh, bit of feedback there for you. Not made up as well. Actually true. So there you go. There we like go. what you will. Like it and stuff. See you on the next one. That's a bit.